Toughness Morning 5 here on Friday, February 20th, 2015. I am Dave Biddle, and I'm joined by the people's champ, Matt Baxendale. Bax, I've seen some really bad ideas, but this one might take the cake. Several conference commissioners, including the Big Ten's Jim Delaney, are kicking around the idea of making freshmen ineligible for both football and men's basketball, similar to the pre-1972 days. In my opinion, this is an awful idea for several reasons. I don't think it will ever come to fruition, but I did want to take some time and make fun of this idea on today's show. Uh, Bax, I think there's a better chance of you rooting for Michigan than this idea actually happening. Yeah, I mean, when I heard about this, my first thought was, what are they trying to bring back the 60s? I mean, I associate, like, ineligible freshmen with, like, like segregated football teams and stuff. Like, that's how old and, like, anachronistic this is. There is no good explanation for this. I mean, what are, the, what are there, like a preponderance of injuries to freshmen that they're trying to, to, to defend? I mean, there is literally no rationale for it, except other than saying, well, you know, we want to just make more stupid, pointless rules, like you can't have cream cheese on bagels, but you can have plain bagels when hosting recruits. It's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard of. I mean, there is no explanation or logical thought process behind this whatsoever. And like you said, there's no way in hell it's going to happen. And just to let the listeners know, the Big Ten is only saying it supports a, quote, national discussion, end quote, regarding this topic. So I just want to have a national discussion. Some people have said maybe this is a negotiation ploy. They're trying to get the NBA to maybe have kids stay in school for two years. They don't like the one and done. And that's the thing. The reasoning behind this national discussion is because they want to do away with the one and done in college basketball. So I'm not sure why football was even brought into the discussion since those guys have to stay in college at least three years anyway. So the whole thing makes no sense to me. And again, it's probably irrelevant because I don't think it will ever get off the ground, Bax. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is if they, if they want to get rid of the one-and-dones in, in basketball, well, all they're doing is delaying the one-and-dones a year because they're still going to only get to play one season before all those guys go to the NBA if they're not eligible as freshmen. Uh, and on top of that, if you try to do this situation where you tell kids they can't even play for a whole year but have to stay for two, all those top recruits, you know where they're going to go? They're going to go to Europe until they're draft eligible. They're not going to go to college basketball. It's only going to hurt college basketball. This is, this is, on every level, this is stupid. I mean, this is this is why the NCAA is the dumbest governing body in the history of dumb and bad governing bodies. <laughs> and you're exactly right. That's exactly what the top college basketball players would do. The top basketball recruits would just go to Europe. I mean, you see some guys do that now, but not many. Uh, but if you if you'd made it two years, you'd see a lot of guys do that because it'd be pointless to go to college and not even play your first year and then only get to play one year. Uh, that, it just makes no sense. And, again, bringing football into the conversation makes even less sense because those guys already have to stay at least three years. Just, you know, whatever, a head-scratcher there. But, again, I don't think anything will come of it. Moving on, the NFL Combine kicked off earlier this week and four former Ohio State players were invited. Tight end Jeff Hireman, wide receiver Devin Smith, Defensive tackle Michael Bennett and corner Duran Grant. Hireman did 26 reps on the bench yesterday. However, he will not run the 40 or do any of the on-field drills today. Hireman will wait until Ohio State's Pro Day on March 13th to do all of that because he's coming off a sprained ankle that he suffered early in the Alabama game. If you're wondering about Devin Smith, he will run the 40 and do the rest of his testing tomorrow. Devin Smith is going to do everything. It's going to be very interesting to see how well he runs tomorrow. Michael Bennett will do his testing on Sunday and Duran Grant will do his testing on Monday. As for predictions of where they'll be drafted, I have Hireman going in the fourth round, Smith going in the late first, maybe early second, but I'll say late first for Devin Smith, Michael Bennett going in the second round, and Duran Grant going in the third round. Bax, give me your prediction. Give me a round for each of those guys. Uh, I'm pretty close to you. I have Bennett and Smith both as second rounders. Uh, I have uh, Hireman and Grant both as fourths. Uh, I, I think that both of them are going to – all four of them, I think, are going to do real well at the combine. Uh, people forget Grant's pretty big for a corner in terms of his, his height and weight. He's, he was one of the better corners in the country last year very quietly. Um, and I think Hireman, the, the people talk about him left and right as being yet another Ohio State tight end that when he gets to the pros, he's going to be way more productive than he was in college. Though in this system, I, I can't get as upset about the ignoring of the tight end as I used to because they do at least serve the tight end now if I'm not. Um, Hyman also is very smart not to run at the combine because he needs to get himself fully healthy before he can uh, before he can uh, get his his times up. And another thing too is, is that Ohio State, if I recall correctly, is one of those uh, you know how there's a different speed for every track. Some scouts will adjust their speeds based on where the players are running for pro days. Ohio State generally gets a little bit of a boost by running at home. The scouts, for whatever reason, if you look at the historical times, they adjust well for the Buckeyes. 
So uh, I think Hireman's being very smart about it. But in the end, everybody wants to see Devin Smith run the 40, and everybody wants to see Duran Grant go through his agility drills because those those could really define where those guys go. I mean, Duran Grant has a strong showing. He could bolt himself up into the second or third round. And if Devin Smith burns it in the 40, and you look at the big plays he made all year, I mean, we've seen people talk about him being a top 15 pick. That's how he solidifies himself in moving up from that second round grade. And it's too bad Hireman uh, can't test, and he's going to have to wait till next month of Pro Day, because I remember being shocked when Tim Hinton told us that Jeff Hireman had the best vertical on the entire team, one of the best bench presses, top five on Ohio State in bench press. Billy Price had the strongest. But Hireman, uh, you wouldn't think of, of Hireman having the best vertical on the entire team, but he did. So I was very surprised to learn that Hireman was, had the best vertical on the team, was one of the strongest guys on the team. He's, he was pretty fast for a tight end, so it's too bad that he can't showcase his talents at, at the combine, but at least he'll get to do so at Pro Day. And we wish all of those guys well, including the guys that are going to be running at Pro Day and get invited to the combine, guys like Evan Spencer, you know, Steve Miller, Daryl Baldwin, all those guys are going to be in an NFL camp somewhere. We wish all of them well. On the basketball front, Ohio State will travel to Michigan on Sunday for a 1 p.m. tip. The Buckeyes are 19-7 and overall. They're 8-5 and in the Big Ten, and they are ranked 24th in the AP poll. Bax, this is a big game for them. I know Michigan's not very good this year. The Wolverines are just 13-13 and overall, just 6-8 and in the Big Ten. But Ohio State has struggled on the road all season. The Buckeyes beat the Wolverines 71-52 to in Columbus on January 13th, the night after Ohio State won the College Football National Championship. As if anybody needs a reminder about that, I just love just any time I can get in the, the discussion that Ohio State won the Football National Championship, I will do so. Um, after the Michigan game, the Buckeyes will have home games against Nebraska and Purdue, and will then travel to Penn State, and will then host the regular season finale against number 5 Wisconsin on March 8th. In my opinion, backs the Buckeyes need to go 4-1 and one during this five-game stretch if they want to get a five seed in the NCAA tournament. Bax, your thoughts on the basketball team? Well, first of all, it's been incredibly frustrating how many close losses this team has had this year. I mean, in the end, you can't just have D'Angelo Russell going off and not getting a ton of support from the senior class. I mean, that's been really the biggest frustration about this team is that you have a really talented young group of players but for whatever reason, the seniors just have not really had fantastic seasons. I mean, Sam Thompson's been pretty solid. But other than that, I, I, you watch this Buckeye team play, and you keep thinking that they're close to putting it together. And we all saw, obviously, through Ohio State's national championship football season this year, so yeah, I could do it too, that it, how much a young team can improve <laughs> over the course of a year. So hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, guys like uh, Tate Diop and uh, – you know, the, all the rest of the young guys can step up. We've already seen Deshaun Tate get to be significantly, uh, have a significantly larger role. Mark Loving really stepped up before that random, we still don't know what the heck happened type of suspension that was going on there. In the end, this Buckeye team is going to do anything. They have to rely on these young guys to really be the ones who carry the mail. And that comes down to being able to win games on the road. That comes down to being able to close out some of these close games that they've been losing. I also think they need to win four of their last five. Um, to really have a shot at a five seed. Right now, I think they're sitting at a seven or an eight, and you don't really want to be that eight seed who's sitting there with the potential to play Kentucky in the second round if you want to make a tournament run. So the Buckeyes need to get together. They need to take care of business against a, frankly, mediocre Michigan team, a team they should drill, and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, that we can see this Buckeye team really start to come together down the stretch and into the Big Ten tournament because, uh, I would certainly love to see them go on a little bit of a tournament run. La- the last year's loss in the first round of debate and still has a pretty sour taste in my mouth. And with it looking like we're only going to get one year out of D'Angelo Russell, I'd really love to see the supporting cast around him get it together. So, Because if you, a guy like Russell is playing his mind out in the tournament and your supporting cast is at least giving him some support, they may be able to make a little bit of a run if they get a decent seeding or a decent bracket. I mean, they could be that six seed or that seven seed that makes a little bit of a run if the seniors can get themselves to be playing anywhere at a, close to the level that we've seen from Russell and some of these younger players this year. And that starts with a strong closing stretch. It starts with winning games on the road. It's crunch time for this basketball team. If they want to be anything more than a good, not great, easily forgettable team, then they have to start upping their level of play, and it starts on Saturday. Yeah, thank goodness there's no freshman ineligibility right now because this team would be unwatchable uh, without D'Angelo Russell and Jay Sean Tate and the rest of this ec- this excellent freshman yeah. class. So uh... <laughs> don't, don't give me nightmares. Don't give me nightmares. <laughs> uh, 
uh, wrapping up the show here. On the recruiting front, Bill Kerlick, the dean of Ohio State football recruiting, already has his recruiting buzz on the site for subscribers. It includes an item on Texas defensive tackle recruit Michael Williams. It includes an item on 2016 quarterback recruiting, which will be very interesting to see how that ends up for Ohio State as far as 2016 quarterback recruiting. And Bill has an item on the 2017 prospect that you're going to need to keep in mind. So make sure you check out Bill Kerlick's recruiting buzz. If you're not a subscriber, try our buy one month, get two months free deal. It's a limited time offer, so take advantage while you still can. Thanks to the People's Champ, Matt Baxendale. He comes strong as always. Thanks to all the listeners out there. I hope you have a great weekend. Take it away, best damn band in the land. Bye.